This video is made possible thanks to our partner Gun Mag Warehouse. The HK MP5 9mm submachine gun is one of the most requested weapons that we get on here. I want to know how this became one of the world's most famous and iconic submachine guns ever. To me, this gun is a rise and fall story like Scarface or Wolf of Wall Street. For instance, in the 80s, it was still at the height of its popularity with you know, every special forces unit, every SWAT team and their mom still using this gun. But by the late 1990s, the MP5 had kind of hit rock bottom with those same units moving away from using it. So you're probably wondering what happened? How did it all go wrong? Well, we'll answer that. But first, cue the 80s montage. It has a high rate of fire at 800 rounds per minute. It only weighs 5.6 pounds and it fires a nine millimeter round, which gives it a light, controllable recoil. It really excels at close indoor engagements up to 100 meters. The MP5 could collapse into its shortest variation to a mere 14.5 inches in overall length. All those qualities and features made this submachine gun the perfect choice for police actions or quiet, stealthy, close quarters missions. Okay, enough of that 80s motivation. What I'm getting at here is this gun is a rock star. In my regular infantry unit, I never came close to seeing one of these. If my supply sergeant had an MP5 in his inventory, then he did a great job keeping it hidden from us mouth-breathing 11 Bravo types. It just so happens in the 1970s, close quarters combat was a booming business. In the publication, A Haunting Figure, The Hostage Through the Ages, Irene Herman wrote about how those who sought to spread terror quickly realized how valuable it could be to take publicly take Westerners as hostages. You saw these kinds of situations were on the rise between the 1970s and the 1990s. This kind of new military problem happened around the same time as the invention of the MP5, which came into service in 1966. Also, in the post-World War II era, the strategy of bombing a whole building to the ground was no longer viable. So elite units had to kick indoors and do what was called surgical raids meaning precision targeted raids with minimal collateral damage. Now the MP5 was in the right place at the right time. It was poised to become more popular than any of its SMG competition like the Uzi. The wake up call was the 1972 Munich hostage crisis that ended in complete disaster. It wasn't all in vain though, because military and police forces around the world realized that they weren't equipped or trained for that kind of contingency. So countries quickly scrambled to create special units armed with the MP5 for the express purpose of handling a hostage crisis. And this investment, it paid off. The stage was set. All we needed was some kind of highly publicized public combat. On April 30th, 1980, we got that. The MP5 was seen live on television by millions of people in the hands of British SAS commandos during the raid of the Iranian embassy in London. The SAS saved 24 hostage lives and eliminated five enemy tangos during Operation Nimrod. It was widely considered to be a success. Thanks to the MP5, combined with these new close quarters tactics, which would go on to become standard operating procedure for how regular infantry operates. Operation Nimrod was the best endorsement that the H&K MP5 could have ever hoped for. It instantly raised the reputation of the gun into legendary status, and it basically became an overnight celebrity. After that, every movie, Rainbow Six video game, and Navy SEAL poster featured this gun. We had reached peak MP5, but what goes up must come down. Something happened in the late 1990s that made the MP5 party come to an abrupt end. This turning point was yet another famous televised combat event. In 1997, the North Hollywood shootout was a bank robbery in broad daylight between LAPD officers and some unusual bank robbers. The cops' guns, the MP5, the Beretta, they were useless against these criminals' body armor. The police eventually defeated the criminals by running out to buy some AR-15s from a local gun store. Although there are some conflicting reports about whether or not that actually happened. The ultimate message and takeaway here is clear to the whole world. You couldn't depend on the MP5's 9mm round to be lethal enough in rare high-risk situations like that. Don't get me wrong, the MP5 is still a massively popular firearm used by police and military forces around the world to this day. But the fact remains that many units, many SWAT teams, have switched to the M4 or other weapons at this point. 
Much like how video killed the radio star, the invention of body armor killed the MP5. As the sword evolves and becomes sharper, so too does the effectiveness of the shield. Cappy, would you shut the f up, please? We're trying to breach the third floor here. We got two tangos in there, six hostages. I'm starting to think you don't know anything about the MP5. Oh, hey there, SWAT guy, I didn't notice you with your nice MP5. Can you tell us about the inner workings of the weapon? What made it so revolutionary when it first came out? Oh, you really are an idiot. I didn't realize, I apologize. The delayed blowback firing system means that the H&K manufactured the gun to be very reliable. This roller delayed blowback mechanism directs the bolt thrust into the barrel and reduces accelerating force on the tungsten filled bolt carrier. Uh, in English, please, some of us back here are just tier three and tier four operators, not tier one. It makes the MP5 here more accurate than say an open bolt SMG, like the Uzi. You know, Cappy, whenever I fire this submachine gun, I'm always reminded of my favorite late 2000s song by Akon. Oh God, you're gonna sing, aren't you? Smack that MP5 all on the floor. Smack that MP5 machine gun, give me some more. Smack that charging handle till you get sore. Smack that MP5, uh hua, hua. Okay, thank you, SWAT guy. That's more than enough of that variety of cringe. Something else that I noticed was really interesting about the development of this weapon was a lot of times you can learn something by what isn't there as much as what is there, you know? And when I'm researching the MP5, something stuck out to me that was just completely missing from its story. Usually when, especially in the 60s, when these new weapons were coming out, they were almost always garbage when they first come out. The first iteration, the first version of the weapon, you know, it's usually trash. And then they end up fixing it over the next few decades. But with the MP5, it seemed like it just came out and it worked and it worked well. And that I think is a big part of why the MP5 was so successful. You don't get all those stories of, of how the magazines don't work or how it has all these problems. Everywhere you read, the gun just seemed to work from version one. And then ever since then, they've just been improving on that design. So that was something I thought was interesting about the MP5, its lack of problems throughout its history. I took a quick glance at the MP5 subreddit to see what kind of culture they have. It's high class stuff. If the AK-47 forums read like the kind of people that build wood furniture with their bare hands, then the MP5 forums read like they pay people to build their IKEA furniture. That's what I would do if I could afford it. Part of the inside joke of the MP5 is how expensive the gun is. The gun was famously used by the US Army Special Forces with the MP5 SD as a suppressed version. And they used it during Vietnam War. The suppressed version is interesting because the whole gun had to be designed to fire at about 16% lower muzzle velocities in order to reach substonic status when you wouldn't get that crack of the bullet breaking the sound barrier. The MP5 SD has one job, fire quietly. I can understand why this gun is so popular after taking it out for a spin. I know I've been giving the MP5 a ton of crap and saying that it's obsolete and you're probably watching this video clicking on that thumbnail because you love the MP5, so I have something for you. The reason the MP5 will never actually go completely obsolete is because it can't be replaced completely by the M4. The M4 is never going to have the low recoil that the MP5 has. The MP5 will always have a place within the special forces and police world because of that low recoil, its reliability, the fact that it's never really encountered any major problems. So if you're like me and you're an MP5 fan, then you can take solace in that fact. I was impressed with how easy it was to accurately fire while fully automatic. When firing the 5.56 fully auto, it takes more skill to control the muzzle with its higher recoil in comparison. If special forces units could get away with using that lower recoil, lightweight MP5, of course they're gonna go with that option. In the past, police and military forces believed that the 5.56 round was more likely to go through walls and injure unintended people. Some tests since then have shown that the M4 actually won't overpenetrate within buildings when using the right type of specific 5.56 ammunition. I do want to point out that those test results are still hotly debated. I just got done binge watching videos from GunMagWarehouse.com and next thing I knew I was in my tactical plate carrier with my MP5. I don't know what happened. Is is anybody, is anybody even, is anybody even listening to me? Hey, go over to the GunMag Warehouse YouTube channel, subscribe to their work, watch their videos. Their videos are a big inspiration for me. Daniel Shaw is an infantry Marine Iraq war veteran. Every time I watch the videos of theirs, I walk away having learned something new about firearms and magazines. They are real subject matter experts on weapon systems like the M60 and the MP5. If you want to know the real details on the performance of these guns, you really have to go over there and check out their perspective on all these topics. Make sure you subscribe to their channel and let them know we sent you.
I know you're probably listening to this while you watch something else in the background. Alt tab out of whatever video game you're playing, come back over here, go to Gun Mag Warehouse, subscribe to their YouTube channel. Do you like magazines? They put bullets in them. That's what they do over there. Or maybe you don't want to do that. I don't know, maybe you don't like guns. Is that why you're not going to Gun Mag Warehouse? This is a historic military firearm because the invention of an accurate, reliable, fully automatic machine gun changed the way the military did urban operations. It was invented in 1964, right when hostage situations were becoming a big thing. Special forces needed a lightweight gun that could be extremely easy to handle. The MP5 fires the same round as the pistol, but handles much easier. Ask anyone who actually fires pistols and they'll tell you how inaccurate and difficult they can be, especially at range. Big announcement, next week we have an exclusive on the True Velocity General Dynamics next generation replacement for the M4. Follow me on Instagram at CappyArmy in the meantime for behind the scenes updates on True Velocity. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for weekly updates on guns and war stories. I'm your host, Chris Cappy from Task and Purpose. See you next week.